Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahlam bikum fidars aliyam. Welcome to new lesson and thank you so much for being here with me. Today it's new exciting lesson about performance instruction but for one particular instrument. You all know during our lesson in a classroom that I brought violin and I showed you this beautiful instrument. Well, today's lesson is going to be about the violin, but it will more relate to some specifics about it, about how violinists read the notes. We will mention some interesting things about history of violin, about the parts of violin, and we will end up with these performance instructions. So, stay with me! As I said, today's learning objective is going to be performance instructions for playing violin. This is our learning intention. And today's lessons is going to consist of three, let's say, chapters that are in the same time your success criteria. So what are you supposed to know today by the end of this lesson are three things. First thing is history of violin and how this beautiful instrument was born. Second thing is the parts of violin, which you pretty much know uh, from the lessons that we had in school. And the third part of today's lesson is going to be about performance instructions, the symbols that people who play violin or violinists can see on their violin sheet of music. Okay, so first thing first, history of violin. What do you think? from which country this beautiful instrument is coming from. What do you think, 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 think? I will help you. Be proud. Because violin is actually instrument that originally is coming from Middle East. It was Arabic instrument called Rebaba or Rebaba, how we say in Europe. And this instrument, old instrument, came from Middle East to Europe somewhere in 9th century. So this instrument that is, as I said, the first uh, string instrument played with a bow, changed over the time. People used to, when it arrived to Europe, people tried to make it bigger. Uh, they tried to uh, make different shape of a body of violin and they got different effects. How they changed the shape of the instrument, the sound was changing. So, somewhere in medieval times, okay, uh, the, mm, the, let's say, grandfather of violin, of today's violin was born somewhere in Italy and it was an uh, instrument called Rebek. Okay, just try to notice the similarity of the name. In Arab world, it was Rebaba, and this is called Rebek. Okay, so this is the oldest instrument that we know about. Okay, uh, how we know that this is the oldest? Well, first of all, this instrument that is called like violin is uh, showed up in one bill. Okay. Fatura, one uh, rich man ordered a uh, violin to be made, okay? And this bill is saved up to till now, and on a bill it's written that he ordered violin. We don't know, we, we don't have this violin saved, but the date on this um, uh, bill is from uh, 1530, okay? The oldest violin that is preserved, the oldest survived violin, is from Milan, Italy, and it is dated on 1538. It is saved in a museum, okay? And uh, this is the oldest one that we know about. So, one thing about violin. Uh, violin changed, as I said, during the time. And when you look at the pictures that I will show you from Rababa and today's violin, you see that the shape changed so much over the time. This instrument, as the shape changed, as the si si sound changed, sorry, um, changed his name. So from Arababa, we have Rebek, we have Vajol, we have Violin, 
Today we have viola, okay? So all these instruments change the name. Even uh, in this string instrument that are played with the bow, uh, we have a huge violin, how you say usually in the school you called it huge violin, uh, which is a cello, okay? Also a string family. So we have different changes. So what are the changes? As I said, the shape. It used to be oval, it, it started as a round, okay? Um, shape of uh, sound holes also changed through the time. And what also changed is the length of the neck, okay? Or the fingerboard. Changed through the time. Why? Because people wanted the violin to achieve higher pitch. So when you play violin, okay, as you move your finger closer to the bridge, the pitch gets higher. So people used to make this uh, neck or the fingerboard longer so that they can achieve a longer pitch, a higher pitch, sorry. So you will see. Okay, so the, the sound goes up. One more time. Okay, so how it's changed in a shape, in the size, length of um, fingerboard, and one more thing, number of strings. Today's violin have four strings, which is E, A, D, and G. How they got the name? You know this, we spoke about this during our lessons. Strings are tuned to make those sounds. So, if we plug the string A, this means it's a tone E or me. If we plug A, this means it's a sound A or La. If we plug D, it's D or Re. And last one, G or Sol. So violin used to have more strings, okay? Even today we have um, electric violins that have five strings, okay? So they have E, A, D, G, and C as a fifth string, but the usual standard orchestral violin has four strings with the names, as I said. So this is about the history of violin. Short, brief details is that we know it came from Middle East, from Arab world, to the, in the Europe. In the Europe, it started to change in, in their sound and shape. And this is what we reach today, today's modern violin. Let's talk a little bit about the parts of violin. This, this part of the lesson you already know, I guess, and because we spoke about this during the lesson. So I will briefly repeat and post a picture so you can follow as I speak. So our violin has the body, which is this, okay? It has a neck and it has the head. Okay, beautiful. Every violin has the strings. It has the fingerboard, fingerboard, where we put the fingers, okay? And it has pegs, okay? Pegs are for tuning violin because if we uh, make them, if we, uh, this way, um, uh, we can make our strings tighter or loosen, and this is how we change the pitch of our strings. Every uh, violin has one very interesting part, same as uh, a cello or viola, they have important part that is called a uh, the bridge. Bridge is not glued, it's not fixed, okay? Uh, the bridge is holding those strings and strings are holding the bridge. And what you can see on uh, violins are those, those also I can twist. And those are the fine tuners, okay? Real professional orchestral violins, they don't have five tuners, only for the E string. If they have, they have only for E string. But this is a school violin, okay? So it has all four. So what else? Those are the sound holes. Somebody also called them F holes because they are like um, a letter F, if you look more closely. And those are the parts that you need to know. Some people say, oh, there are more parts. Those are the ribs, 
this edge and so on and so on but you don't know you don't need to know these parts okay uh, very important part okay is this one which is called the bow bow has this wooden part okay uh, here we have an eye we have horses here uh, and here we have a small screw if I open this, the hair will go down, they will be loosened, but if I add it up, I can play. What violin players and all the bow uh, string instruments are using for the bow is this. It is called a uh, Rosen. Uh, students were innovative and creative and they already gave another name for this. They said Sabun for violin. Okay, it is uh, helping our bow and horse's hair to always stay in a good shape and not be damaged and in the same time help us to have a nice and clear sound. For example, if you buy a new violin and you take a bow and you start to play violin, uh, you cannot make a sound at all until you put the rose in. Okay, so right after you put a uh, rosin on the um, a bow on the horse's hair, it will start making sound. Okay, so by this we second the second chapter and second uh, uh, success criteria that you should achieve in this lesson, and that is the parts of violin. So we covered the history of violin, we covered the parts of violin, and now we are going to the third part which is our main learning intention for this lesson and it is performance instruction for playing violin. So when you look at the music sheet that violin player is using, at the first side it looks like any other music sheet for any other instrument. Which is fine because we all are musicians and we use all the same the same system as do re mi fa sol la ti do, but there are some very special and specific music symbols that you can find on a music sheet for violin players or for bow players to be more specific for any bow player that you cannot find on other uh, sheets for other music instruments. So I will mention only five or six of them and it would be great if you can memorize them okay and as i speak about them the picture of them is going to show up here on the screen so you can easily learn them the first one is called arco okay this means that you should play your bow instrument with a bow what does he mean if you see the sound arco you should play with a bow. And now you can ask, well, how else I can play? It's a violin. Well, you can because in some parts of a song, not every, but some of the songs, uh, composers may ask you to play pizzicato, which means you need to pluck your string with a finger. Okay, which is called pizzicato. You already know two. You now have uh, two uh, learning, oh, sorry, performing instructions. One is arco with the bow and pizzicato is plucking string with your finger. The third symbol is that sometimes when you play a song, uh, you don't know what's coming ahead. So composer needs to tell you that you need your whole bow to finish a music phrase, let's say. So he can say, bow up. Or he can say, bow down. So start from down or start from up. Those are two extra symbol. Okay. There is also one that is called slur and which, set, which usually stands above a group of notes and it, it uh, tells to violin player or the cello player, whatever string with the bow instrument player, tells that you should play all these notes under the slur on one bow, in one movement of a bow. 
So all those notes need to be in one movement of the bow. So no, don't go up and down, all in one. Okay, no down and up, only one. Okay, and the last symbol that I want you to memorize, the last expression I want you to memorize is sul ponticello, sul ponticello. What it means? It means close to the bridge. Let me explain. So, you see the bridge and usually we are supposed to move our bow somewhere here. Okay? But sometimes composer will tell you that you need to move your bow closer to the bridge and play there. For many different reasons, one of them is the uh, quality and the color of the sound, okay? Which is different when you are here than when you are here, okay? So, sul ponticello means close to the bridge. So now, you know the third goal of this lesson. You know some performance instruction for bow string instrument. So let me repeat one more time. We have arco, which is play with the bow, pizzicato, which means pluck with the string with your finger. We have symbol for bow down, symbol for bow up. We have a slur and we have sul ponticello, which means close to the bridge. Perform the song. So for the end of this lesson, it would be good if I can play one song for you on violin or I should share a, some nice song. I will most definitely post some interesting videos that can help you understand this, but to avoid any problem with damaging, stealing everybody, anybody's rights on internet, I prepared a special violin video and special musical greeting for you and your family. I hope you will enjoy in the part of the video that is about to start now. I wish you all the best, I hope you are healthy and safe, that you are good, say hi to your family, God bless you and text me for anything that you need to get more clear or you have any questions. God bless you, uh, wish you lots of love and light, bye bye. Hello students of James Manchester School for Today. My name is Dania and I play the violin. I'm really excited to help you learn a little bit more about the violin. Uh, today I'm going to be playing Manuet in G major. Hope you enjoyed. Say hi to your families. Stay safe. Stay home. God bless you all. Bye.